I, uh, given you know the the legitimate perception of of a conflict around my uh, involvement previously, I have said that in hindsight I, I should have recused myself, and okay. that was have, a mistake on my part. Mr. Have you, Angus, have you read the Conflict of Interest Act? Mr. Minister? Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe when I first came into office, I would have had uh, access to all of those uh, those acts. Uh, so you're not familiar with it. The fact that you just remembered that we paid $41,000 for you to do travel. Are you not aware that under the Conflict of Interest Act, Sections 11, Section 12, Section 15 of the Code are explicit? And it's also explicit about the... the, the Ministers are not to be getting paid travel. So if you haven't really, if you don't really remember the Conflict of Interest Act, you remember the Aga Khan ruling by the Ethics Commissioner, because it seems that he made direct rulings about a situation that you are now in. Isn't there someone in your office who would tell you, come on, minister, <laughs> these, are the, these are the rules, these, these, this is the law of the land. It applies to you as well. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Minister. Mr. Chair, um, it is it is a mistake on my part not to have uh, paid expenses. As I've uh, said, I did not know that those expenses were not paid. I did not uh, have any awareness of that. But over the course of the last uh, short while, I've reviewed my records in detail. And uh, given that uh, serious oversight, I have made sure that that, uh, that has been rectified. But I, I recognize that it was a mistake, and I, I take responsibility for that. Uh, well, Charlie, before you, before you start again, can you hold your microphone a little closer and don't be uh, rubbing it? The, <laughs> the uh, translators are having difficulty. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry, I'll, not, you, I'll give you the time to back. Me here. You, thank <laughs> you. Well, I guess the issue here is that we paid for your travel. That has the apparent uh, perception of attempting to buy political influence. The fact that you're talking with Craig Kielberger, you're talking with we, I'm not sure they're registered to lobby, they're hiring your daughter. You're not thinking that there's a problem here, but they're paying for influence. I think that that's really, really concerning that you didn't seem to think that that was a problem. So I'd like to, to end on the question. With we, you signed a contribution agreement with a real estate holding company. How in God's name is that a credible decision by the government of Canada to funnel nearly a billion dollars to a group that's very close to you and your family, that's very close to the prime minister and his family, a group that had gone through no, uh, there was no public tender here, and they come up with a real estate holding company and you file the money through them? What were you thinking? Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, final answer this round. Thank you. Um, well, to start with, as I've said, um, I I certainly uh, was in error not uh, not paying expenses. I didn't know about those expenses being paid in my behalf, but uh, that was an error, and um, I I uh, have owned up for that error. I uh, know that uh, I know that uh, the uh, the government uh, decision around uh, the administration of this program was taken after the appropriate due diligence by the public service. I don't know of which uh, organization in the, uh, in the, in the WE um, decision was the organization that, that was given to, that contract. That's not something that was brought to my attention. Uh, of course, wow. uh, you, we expect that- a real estate that, holding company and you didn't double check that? Where is the due diligence minister? As I've said, uh, Mr. Chair, the um, the public service took a look at how we could best deliver this program and how it could be best uh, administered. And that recommendation was the one that we looked at in order to deliver on behalf of students. 